In this video we're going to take a look at the temple challenge on Hack the Box. It's an easy crypto challenge and the description says I found the following message in a temple. I had the sensation that they were hiding something. Can you help me discover what it was? So we'll download the files. I solved this about a year ago so again can't quite remember what it entailed. Let's copy this. It's a PNG image this time. And let's go and do some basic file checks. So we'll just verify the file type first of all. PNG image. We can check the exif. Nothing of interest. We can have a look at the strings. And we have no strings uh, greater than 10 characters. So we can just run strings there and see exactly what we've got. Again, doesn't look like anything interesting. Let's. Uh, display the image, we've not even opened it yet. And we can see here it's called scroll and it has some kind of um, ancient or alien looking characters here so rather than perform using some crypto tools or kind of stego tools on this since it's an image it looks like we might need to try and decode, try and identify what what language this is, what the characters come from and try to decode it. So let's see if we can do a bit of research into the language. So let's go to Google first, or your search engine of choice, DuckDuckGo, whatever, and um, we'll try to search. We know that the, the file's called scroll, so there's a hint there. We have the description, and the, type, the name of the challenge on the description mentions temple, and that it's hiding something so um, we can search for let's try temple scroll ancient symbols um, have a look at the images here not looking too good let's try ancient alphabet temple scroll ancient alphabet Let's have a look at this Elder Scrolls. It's not matching up with what we want. What about this rune? Scandinavian runes. So it looks like this kind of thing. We actually have here a T, which is the arrow up here, but we don't I don't see any I don't see the other characters. Let's Okay, uh, Temple Scroll Ancient Crypto. Because obviously this is a crypto challenge. It's not just an alphabet, it's not just a language, but it's a. It's what would be used to hide information. But I'm not seeing anything there. Temple Scroll Crypto. <laughs> there we get a walkthrough, which isn't. I was I was actually contemplating using TinEye or Google Reverse Images to search for these characters, but that's what I was kind of concerned as we would just quickly find a a, a a write up, and I want to try and do this challenge as if it was a new challenge and the solution wasn't available, and show how how we would go about finding it. So I'm going to ignore those two images which mention hack the box. Um, let's go back to all. Yeah, you see we have write-ups there. Temple scroll. Crypto symbols. Pig pen cipher. Uh, let's look at our scroll again. Not seeing any of these dots in there. Doesn't look like it. Um, crypto with ancient 
symbols. Let's take a look at the images. What about this one here? Looks a little familiar, but not. Um, this could be. I'm not seeing our symbols here specifically, but it looks quite similar. Let's have a look what was the Sofa's mindset codes. Oh, it's gone. Ah. View file. Doesn't get, even give us a title to say what type of cipher that is. Um, okay, cipher convert runes to numbers. Runic alphabet. If we have decode.fr site that we've used a couple of times here. What about these? These symbols look. They do look quite similar. So, Unicode chars are allowed here. Okay. Is this the full alphabet? Yeah. Let's search here for rune. Let's see, is there any other rune? What about this? The ban? No. Rune. Mastermind solver slope calculator. Okay. Symbols. Symbol cipher list. Okay, this looks good. This looks good. Elder, that's the one we were just looking at, which looked quite similar to what we have. The Cisterian monk numerals also looks close. You can see a lot of familiar shapes there. Let's have a quick scroll down. All right, let's check out this monk cipher a little bit more. Uh, monk numerals, okay. Here we have some symbols, although it doesn't seem to have all of our symbols there. Are we able to represent what we have here? I see this bit here, which is correct, but what does that convert to? 70. It's correct, but it's missing the little arrow, it's missing the little line here as well. And I can't see an alternative. Let's try to understand a little bit more how this works anyway. So it says um, tools to convert, sister seeing numbers, read slash write monks. Cipher and numbers of Cistercian. I hope I'm saying that right, probably not. Into Arabic numerals using the Middle Ages, also called Cipher of the Monks. The numeral system uh, uses a quadrant in four parts to represent numbers from 0 to 9999, 9999. Any number necessarily consists of a central vertical bar, as we have here in every, in every symbol. If nothing else is written, then it takes the value 0. Otherwise, the quadrant at the top right corresponds to the units, the quadrant at the top left for the tens, the quadrant at the bottom right for the hundreds, and the last quadrant at the bottom left for the thousands. There are then, there are then nine symbols to represent the numbers. And then it has these different symbols. So, rotate these symbols to write them in the right quadrant. Okay, and it gives an example here. Rotate these mirrors. Rotate and mirror these symbols to write them in the right qu quadrant. So five five thousand five hundred fifty-five would be written as, and you can see here we have the five. Which one is five? One, two, three, four, five. This one here, and it's been wrote. So you have it up here. You have it down here. You have it down here. 
Does that let me? Okay. Um, okay, so if we were to try and calculate these, so if we take a look at our first example, first letter, first character, we have here the vertical line, which is zero, and then in the top left hand corner, sorry, in the top right hand corner, we have our units. The top left is the tens, so this is 10 times something, and this is 1 times something and these are the nine symbols to represent the numbers so in this case we have the the line in the middle here is represents a 2 and then this um kind of the top left corner which is like a right angle here 90 degree angle would represent this 7 right here. So this is 7 times 10 and 2 times 1 and that gets us a 72. So let's let's take a note of that. Let's open up Sublime and we'll say that the first character is 72 and then the second character we have a line is 0. We have the Let's start from the left, um, from the tens. So we have we have a, the opposite version of that. So an an eight. We have an eight, and then we have this line going diagonally, which is a four. Eight four. Our next character line up is zero, and then we have six. You can see the six here, so it's a six and a six, so six six. We then have a line, which is our zero. We have our tens, which is is the tens just not connected there when it should be? I think the ten is just the same as we had for our second example, right? Eight. Okay, let's. Oh, sorry, I'm confusing. This line here is coming. Is what we just took off our third. So no, this is just a, a line. This is just a line sticking out here, which corresponds to to a two, right? So we have a 2, and then we have the diagonal here, a 3. And in this case, then we have the bottom right as well, which is the hundreds. And that's just the line out there, which it's a line at the bottom. If it was in the middle, it would be a 2. It's a line at the bottom, so that's a 1. So it's 123 for the fourth one. For the fifth one, we have 0. And then we have the line on each side, which is 7. So 77. We have then a 0. We have the line up to the left, which is a 4. And then we have this corner right angle thing, which is an 8. 4, 8. We then have. Well, we just did that. That was an eight, so that's eight eight, or no? Actually, these are different. So we have seven. This one is a seven, and this one is an eight because of the angles these are going at they're reversed. That's a bit confusing. Okay, seventy eight, and then we have our line down zero. We have the bottom right then was the hundreds and it's flat so 100 and then we have this is just the single digits so this is just the arrow coming down so 7 17 or 107 sorry because we had the 100 and now we have our line down which is 0 
on the top left we have the line across which is again 100 oh sorry that's the tens that's the tens ignore me um, this, gets, this gets confusing um, the bottom right looks like the same so 1 1 and then we have this triangle which is a 5 and then in this one we have our square to the top left which is right here 9 and then we have the same that we had the last time, the 5, 9, 5. We have a line down, 0. We have our hundreds here, which is a 1, so it's a 100. And, and then we have the right angle down, 7, 107. We have a line down, 0. We have our top left, which is the 7, and then we have our top right 8, line down 0, a triangle on the left, so 5, and then a line at the top, so 1. We're getting there, we're getting there. We have our arrow up, uh, sorry, our line up, which is zero. And then we have three on each side, so three, three. And then onto our final one, we have line down, zero. We have our bottom right, which is the hundreds, which is one, 100. We have our top left, which is the tens, which is the flat line is it on the middle yeah it's on the middle so three and then we have our triangle here which is a five so one three five and I think that's right let's go and let's put this into ascii2hex.com I'm gonna convert it from decimal to ascii oh no okay that didn't do that for us Let's um, oh okay. On that last example, I went with the the one three five. The three is actually to the right here. It's really confusing just the the columns here. So two, it was actually a two one two five for our final character. Let's try that decimals convert and there we get our flag what's worth noting there is that if we had one character incorrectly in the decimals that wasn't going to convert for us let's go to cyberchef and see if that would have been a better option for us because if we didn't go and check that last character we could have you know that could have taken a lot longer to solve let's do hex from hex oh sorry not from hex from decimal from decimal and support by space yeah what if we had 135 you see if we had 135 here we would have known all right we've got the flag right we're just missing the last character which we know is a um, curly brace anyway so that's something worth bearing in mind if your hex isn't outputting in ASCII to hex or some other tool might be worth trying another just to see because some of them might process them differently if there's one character that's invalid it might just not print any of them at all but uh, there's that challenge solved anyway hope you've enjoyed this video it's probably a, a little bit long longer than it needed to be just from me manually calculating all those but hopefully that uh, helped to demonstrate how it actually works rather than us just you know um, just like translating it based on a a, a picture of all the different alphabets or something Alright, and uh, yeah, any questions, comments, leave them down below. Thanks.